Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. It is time for October favorites. It's Halloween in a couple of days. I'm really excited. I get a lot of trick-or-treaters in my neighborhood so it's super fun to see everyone dressed up and kids are so creative these days. Like their costumes are definitely on point and very clever so I always really like to see those. I think last year we gave out about like 350, 400 pieces of candy, and that was letting each kid only have one piece. So like I said, <laughs> it's a big night in my neighborhood, which is really exciting. And I'm actually heading to Target later today to get more Halloween candy um, because last year I ran out really quickly. I think we ran out in about two hours. Yes, there's that many kids that came through. And so this year I think I'm gonna buy an extra bag, <laughs> try and hold on for another hour, but Halloween candy is so expensive, so that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, I'm really excited that October is coming to a close because we are getting into those holiday months, which are my personal favorite. I just really enjoy spending time with family and people have days off and you actually get to see them and it's so wonderful, so I'm very excited. There were a couple of products that I was loving in October, so I'm gonna share those with you guys today and then as our new tradition goes, I am going to do my reflection on September intentions and then my intentions for October. So so that will be at the very end of this video. If you want to skip past the products and just head there, then go ahead. Otherwise, let's start talking about these products. So the first and only true skincare favorite I have is this Naturopathica Pumpkin Purifying Enzyme Peel. And this is a mask. I got this a few months ago at this point. My sister and I did like a little spa night together at a local spa that used uh, not all natural, but a lot of green or cleaner products. And we both got facials and I got those pads that I've showed you guys in the past, um, those exfoliating pads from Luzerne Labs. I got those there and then I actually picked up this product as well. Um, and those were both products that were meant to exfoliate my skin because like I've mentioned a whole host of times, my biggest issue is definitely hyperpigmentation and texture. Those are two things that I've always dealt with, super frustrating, but exfoliation can obviously really help with that. And pumpkin is a really cool ingredient because it's a natural exfoliant. Now this product isn't all natural. Uh, this is like a clean clinical brand, but a lot of good ingredients, cruelty free. And I use this, it says to use about once or twice a week and I just started in the month of October and I really like it. I definitely notice as soon as I remove it, my skin is much softer. I only leave it on for about three to five minutes. So it's a super fast treatment, which if you guys are busy like me, then it's really nice. Or if you don't have time to do your skincare routine until really late at night, then this mask is perfect because it's so fast and you just stick it on and those five minutes go by in no time. By the time you're done brushing your teeth, you're ready to take this off. Jared actually did this mask too and if you're not used to acids, it will make you go a bit red, but he had no peeling, anything like that, whereas my skin is used to acids, it's used to exfoliation, so I had no redness and was totally fine. So I think it works for a lot of different skin types. If you're looking for a good exfoliating mask, check this one out. You get a lot of product in here, which is really nice, and it smells like pumpkin. And obviously it's it's very seasonal. <laughs> so it's been kind of fun discovering this pumpkin mask for the fall. Okay, next favorite sort of falls in between the skincare and makeup category, and that is the Hint Beauty Sun Prep Broad Spectrum SPF 25. Now I'm gonna do a full review on this product, so I'm not gonna get into too many details, but it is in my favorites video, so you guys know it's a good product. Mainly the reason I really like this is because it's lightweight, it's not oily, and it's a great primer before you put on any sort of foundation. I'm actually wearing it today under my Kosas Tinted Face Oil. You guys saw me do that in another video. Just really enjoying this product and I will go into more detail in the full review, so get excited for that. So the last product is a favorite on a lot of levels. It is the Aether Beauty Rose Quartz Crystal Gemstone Palette. This is an eyeshadow palette. Um, I did a full review on this. I will link it either up above or down below. This has been the eyeshadow palette that I have been reaching for all month. I'm really, really enjoying it. I really enjoy this brand. I feel like I've talked enough about it where I don't need to repeat myself, but you get a really nice variety of colors and these really fun metallic colors in the middle. The pigment is great, the blendability is great, and I just find that this works very well for me. And then like a little bonus fact and a bonus favorite about this was just getting to meet the founder, Tyla. Um, it was really cool to learn more about the brand. A really amazing packaging that it's all sustainable and the length that this brand goes to, to 
to be sustainable I think is really admirable. Uh, so yeah, so an all around favorite with this palette. So honestly, those are the only products that were my favorites. I do have three other sort of lifestyle favorites. So one of them is actually dishware. <laughs> um, I purchased these a while ago and I keep forgetting to put these in my video, but I actually bought these plates from a local ceramic studio to me. Um, I will link them down below. I do believe that they ship, but the benefit of living close to the studio is that they actually have discount prices on the imperfect ceramics. So ones that like either haven't been cleaned well enough on the bottom before being put into the kiln or things like that where it's such small unnoticeable things to the average person um, but they still sell them at discount because they're technically not perfect so I actually bought all unperfect dishes I don't think you would be able to tell if you looked at them but it meant I got a massive discount on them which is incredible because this dishware is pretty expensive I really love it because it's dishwasher safe and it's microwave safe and it's just absolutely beautiful. I've wanted ceramic dishes for a long time. I just think that they last really well and I love the aesthetic of them. I also love that I can support a local artisan because I think what they're doing is fantastic. So I was really excited. Jared and I kind of saved up um, and I convinced him <laughs> to buy um, a set of four large plates, four small plates, and four bowls. And that was sort of a big splurge purchase that we were really excited about that we made a few months ago um, and we've been loving them ever since and I think it does kind of make a difference when you know you take pride in the food that you make and then you put it on a beautiful dish it's just like the whole experience of dining feels more exciting <laughs> especially dining in so I felt like I wanted to stick those in this favorites video the two other favorites that I have are a podcast and a book so podcast um, is something new that I found uh, it's called where should I begin or I'm gonna get that name wrong it's either where should I or where should we? Let me check. So it's called Where Should We Begin? Um, I wouldn't say that this is like for everyone. It's with a it's with a couples counselor, a super well-known couples counselor, I guess you could call her, psychologist. Um, her name is Esther Perel. Discovered her a while ago with a TED Talk, and then I recently found out that she has a podcast. And I just really appreciate her view on like modern relationships. I think I've always been someone who has like long-term relationships. I think like when I fall, I fall hard, which is something that like I love about myself, but also being younger, that's different than a lot of my peers. I think she has a really healthy perspective on like long-term relationships in modern culture and all of the things that can affect them. So the podcast is an anonymous couple session that's been recorded with their consent, of course, that sort of deals with a central issue she feels like a lot of different couples could relate to, maybe in a broad sense, maybe in a very specific sense. And it's just like listening to these sessions happen, hearing her commentary on them. And I am super interested in psychology. I actually thought that I wanted to become a psychologist or a therapist for a long time. Um, because I sort of feel like I fill that role for a lot of people in my life but I realized that like I'm too empathetic like I get too involved and too invested in like I feel the emotional toll of other people having issues so I don't think that I could be a therapist at least at this point in my life but I just find it really interesting listening to these couples like I said listening to her commentary and I just really appreciate her approach it's a lot about um you know long-term relationships are hard work and I think if anyone says differently then like that's great for them but that's also I don't believe the norm I think like there are always ups and downs I think that it's strange that no one talks about that that everyone says like oh it should just come so naturally um, when that's not usually the case and I think like we're discrediting ourselves if we don't acknowledge like the hard work and the love that we put into relationships and like that's why they work so yeah so I really appreciate her approach if you are interested in that sort of stuff then definitely check out her podcast like I said it's called where should we begin with Esther Perel I will link it down below and then the final favorite is a book and that is the goldfinch so the goldfinch is a book that my boyfriend actually recommended to me he really loved it and I actually listened to it on Audible. This was sort of my first time doing an audiobook and I really liked it. I mean, I'm definitely a podcast listener. Um, 
With the audiobook, I was listen to it like when I'm going on walks and stuff, if I didn't want to listen to music, and I found that really helpful. I definitely couldn't multitask that well with an audiobook. I couldn't like be working and listening at the same time, then I would like lose track of where I was in the story and all that. I needed to be doing something like walking or just like closing my eyes and resting and listening to it. But the book was fantastic. Um, definitely check out The Goldfinch. It's a story about a boy and a painting and losing his mother. And it's very interesting. Go look up a bio. I will link that down below. I'll link it on Amazon as well if you guys want to order it and read it. If you end up reading it, message me. Let's talk about it. I'm very excited. Um, it was just a really good book and I really liked it. Okay, now for the final part of the video. I will try and go fast through this because I know these videos always go on forever and I'm so sorry. But... For September, I had made intentions to continue waking up early slash meditate, that was one, to walk more, and to do a yoga class in person. I hope I'm remembering all those correctly. I really feel very unprofessional right now. I should have gone back and watched my September favorites to make sure that those were what it was. But I'm pretty sure those were what it was because that's what I was working on, so I really hope that that's what it was. As far as the first one goes, <laughs> waking up early was difficult this month. It's gotten so much darker. I'm really looking forward to turning the clocks back. I think fall forward, no, fall backwards. Okay, well I'm looking forward to the clocks changing, whichever direction it is, because I know fall is when it actually helps and it's not so dark in the morning. So that'll be nice. I woke up early, getting out of bed again was the tough part. So that's something that I still need to work on. Meditation went a lot better. I actually found an old recording from an MBSR class that I took a while ago. MBSR is mindfulness-based stress reduction. I've actually talked about this in another video. I think it was my chronic pain video. Um, I suffered from a back injury and a lot of anxiety and stuff like that and I took an MBSR class and it was so helpful in terms of just reducing my focus on pain, um, helping with anxiety, all of that stuff. If you suffer from either of those, I definitely look into MBSR. It made a big difference in my life and I hope that it makes a big difference in yours. But there's a technique of meditation that they use called a body scan and it's a long meditation. It's about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, but I found it really helpful during that time period in my life and I thought it would be a great way to increase my meditation time now. <laughs> and so I was rifling around like old paper is trying to find the password for the for the online platform that I paid for and I found it which is wonderful so I actually got to use that body scan meditation this month and I felt like it made a world of difference meditation definitely doesn't feel natural to me yet it still feels like something that I sort of dread before I do it like oh I have to spend time doing this today so I'm hoping that that will change but I did do it this month which is exciting next was the 10,000 steps I'm super proud of myself for this because it was so much harder than I thought it would be I did not realize how much I sat and how not mobile I was during the day. I really felt like, oh, 10,000 steps, like no big deal because when I was in college, that was like an afternoon. You know, you're walking all around campus, everything like that, but now in the work world, like you really don't move that much, which is a shame. <laughs> so finding time to actually move throughout my day, to get motivated to move and to move by myself was really hard. I'm definitely someone who likes to be with people, likes to be on a walk with someone. I don't like going by myself. It's just not as enjoyable for me, but I had to sort of force myself out of my shell and do that, and I did it. I did almost 10,000 steps every single day this month. There were a couple of days that I didn't quite hit 10,000, which I'm not beating myself up on. I also just used my iPhone health app to track that. Um, so I obviously don't have a super accurate reading, <laughs> like it didn't track me when I was like walking around my house or the office because I obviously don't carry around my phone like that. So I would say on average I probably did about like 9,000 steps a day, 9,500, and then some days I obviously surpassed 10,000. I found it way easier on the weekends to hit 10,000, I think that's kind of understandable. So I really focused on that intention. I'm really proud of myself and I actually noticed that it made a huge difference in my mood and my day. And then the final intention, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I didn't do. I really wanted to go to a yoga class this past month and I just didn't do it. Um, I had time, I'm not gonna say I didn't have time, I had time, I just chose not to. And I sort of let go of the YouTube yoga practice 
but I have the saving grace, which is one of my friends has just moved into the town that I'm living in and she just bought a Groupon, which is like a month unlimited at a yoga studio that's close to us. And so she asked me if I wanted to do that. And it's like $46 a month for an unlimited yoga pass, which is really great, especially in my area. So this is a great transition into next month's intention. So next month, now that I have this Groupon pass, I have no more excuses <laughs> not to go. So that is my first intention going to a yoga practice regularly. Second intention is a little bit more creative. First intention was physical, this is more creative. I am gonna try and do a drawing a day in November. You guys know that I studied graphic design and I've always been a really creative person but I feel like I've been kind of in a rut lately and I think just doing a drawing a day with no pressure around like what I'm drawing, how good it is, all of that will just sort of help loosen me up a little bit and help me feel more creative again. When you get in a rut creatively, it's sometimes hard to feel like the work you're producing is even like worth producing, if that makes sense. And yeah, I just, I really wanna get out of that rut. So I'm gonna try and do a drawing a day and see how that goes. Also, I think it could be kind of fun to look back on. And then my third and final intention, which I feel like it's a theme now, it's sort of like bringing a couple ideas with me into this next month, is to continue walking 10,000 steps a day or more and just feel like I'm moving a lot and then also to continue meditating. So I'm combining those two because they're sort of the same as last month. I just want those two last ones to feel to feel a little bit more natural like not so dreaded like I want to start looking forward to both of those activities and not like oh gosh how am I going to do this and I think the more you do stuff like that the more natural it becomes in your routine and the easier it is to be like oh I just woke up time to meditate or oh I just woke up I'm going to go for a walk and I think I'm a creature of habit so doing things over and over and over again are helpful for me to really ingrain them in my mind <laughs> and make me do them all right guys those are all my October favorites and intentions I do have one last note which I want to let you guys know about and that is something like kind of sad but also happy I'm officially I'm actually going to be going down to one video a week. It's just been super busy for me and there's a lot of things that are pulling my attention right now and I just can't give you guys 100% on two videos a week so I don't think it's worth doing it. I am someone who really wants like the quality of my channel to stay the same. I really want videos to feel like enjoyable and well done to you guys so I don't want to sacrifice on quality especially if I feel like I'm just like forcing stuff out of me. So I am going down to one day a week. I do want to know which day works better for you guys whether you want Tuesday upload Friday uploads is there a different day that works better and whether you prefer morning or evening uploads so I'm on Pacific time so just keep that in mind in terms of like morning or evening and yeah right now I upload at 9 a.m. so that's like 12 p.m. East Coast time if that's helpful all right guys thank you so much for watching if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe down below for videos always featuring clean green beauty if I'm able to do more than one video a week of course I will um, but I just want to let you guys know that consistently there will always be one video up a week make sure to let me know your November intentions I just realized that I said September intentions in terms of last month it is October Oh man, time just really goes by fast. Make sure to let me know your November intentions. I hope you guys feel good about your October intentions. Have a very happy Halloween and I will see you all next week. Bye.